You can see I've left my cables pretty long. You hear me swearing and cursing. You know I probably should have went the easy way. Stuffed that up. Left me two wires. Showed me a little trick. I've got a power lead and also a a wire tester here. So obviously that's the one that completes the circuit. Floods recede and then it's just a matter of closing that gate back up and then resuming. G'day folks, Jason from the Outer Farm here. We're actually on the Outer Farm property today. What we're going to be doing is, this is my New Zealand A-frame braces. I'm putting spring gates through here. A few videos back, I put two cables under the ground. One's going to be an earth and one's going to be a hot wire. So to move the conductivity from that side to this side, we need to put our hot wires or jumper wires down our six strands. What we're going to do today is I'm going to show you how I go about and draw a jumper my wires all the way down. The bottom is going to be an earth. You can see I've left my cables pretty long. The reason I've done that is one's obviously going down to earth, which is that bottom wire, and the other one I'm going to route up to that wire and then jump them from there. Any excess cable I'm just going to fold up loop it around there what I want to do then is put a zip tie on that cable the reason being is if I ever damage that earth strap with a whipper snipper I can just take that loop out and I've got more loop to go down the bottom the first thing I'm going to do is strip these wires I'm going to leave probably about an inch on both end, on the ends of these so bigger hole gets the black cable and there's a thin wire inside it's double insulated and the second one down worked out. I've done a trial on this and it worked out pretty good. So that should be, yeah, perfect. You can see from there, I haven't cut through any of those wires. There's several cores. Looks like there's one, two, three, five. That's a six strand core there. So that's one end done. Take it back to the second wire hole for the clear insulation inside. Stuff that up. Left me two wires. Strip this one off slowly. So that's that black insulation I was talking about. And then you've got that clear, that second double insulation on the inside. I know that one fits in that second hole. Carefully, carefully. One's done too. Check those wires in. Go to the other end. When it comes to jumping the hot wire cable from wire to wire, there's multiple methods you can use. My preferred method is just a split bolt. As you can see, that split bolt has got a slot in that bolt, and you just put the wires through both sides, and just screw down, and it's got a locking collar inside. Screw down on that, and that tightens it onto the wire. And when it comes to the jumper wire itself, there's two ways you can do it. There's an easy way, which is to cut a single wire and join it to one wire and measure it and strip the other end and join it to that wire. Then cut a separate piece to go from there up to there. They're all separate pieces. Or well, the hard method is if you want a single wire, you cut it there and you cut an inch strip in the middle there and take that off and then go up to the next and do the same. Cut an inch strip and then vice versa all the way up. That way it's continuous all the way up. There's no real advantage apart from the fact that you haven't got all these joints. I don't know if I'm going to regret this, but I'm going to try the method of one continual piece all the way up and you'd want to hope when you come to the second wire you don't accidentally cut too much and the strands are broken and then you've got to start again. I'm going to go the hard way. We'll soon, soon find out if I've got any regrets when I get to the top. You hear me swearing and cursing, you know I probably should have went the easy way. Oh, that split washer over that hot wire. Get that wire in there. Put the nut back on. Strip that wire in. Tighten him up. That 
don't need to be real tight. If you over tighten them, it doesn't take much and you snap those bolts inside. So that's one done. I'm going to keep them inside this A-frame brace. I'm not going to, that way it keeps it tidy and out the road. Even though you shouldn't have to be whippersnippering up here, I still like it to be in here tidy. So the next one I'll cut there. Give that an inch. Come out there. The only thing when you're doing this method, you've got to have a Stanley knife as well. Because you've got to be able to strip the insulation of that inch piece out. So just go careful on those. On that second hole. This is going to be a little bit tedious. Next one again. Second one. Stanley knife. And strip that out the inside. I've got to go extra careful on mine because I chose aluminium core wire inside my jumper wires because it's better conductivity but aluminium is a lot softer than stainless or any other material so when you're stripping it like this be very very careful it's going to be easy to go straight through those aluminium cores you don't want to be doing that because then you're back to the start that one's off Flip bolt. The only thing you've got to do though is put that in there first. I just remembered. Otherwise, that ain't going to work. Spit bolt on. one done this one here yep same through back under there so I want to strip him off about there double check measure twice cut Side once this. join it to this wire and then I'm a lot of the timeless posts have got holes drilled through this H post here so the pre-drilled hole I'm gonna bring the wire back out through the hole and then I'm just gonna go straight up for these two that way it keeps it nice and neat and close to the post you haven't got any loops. Strip this last one off. Join it together. Put the spit bolt on. Then I'll come back and I'll give you a look. The finished product. So there we have the finished product. One continuous wire all the way through, jumping each wire together. As you can see, I've they're those pre-drilled holes I was talking about, right through that H-post. So I've just come above that one, through that hole, and continued it up through, all the way up to the top. One continuous jumper wire. Now that completes the second side of this continuous jumper wire on this spring gate. Thread it all the way through, nice and neat, all the way up that post. On this one, I decided to cut individual wires and wire strip each end along each one of those five wires instead of doing a continual wire all the way up. I found that to be a lot easier and a lot faster. The thought process behind why I done it this way is after doing that continual one, I've only, I was only cutting enough wire or stripping an inch of wire. If that was to break in that spot, the whole lot would have to be pulled down. In this instance, if one wire busted between each wire, as in the jumper wire, I've only got to replace that one wire. So I think this is a better method. What I forgot to do when I run these wires through is mark both ends of these cables. So now I don't know which end meets with which. You can't really put in your earth wire on one end and then having it on the hot wire on the other. So my son's an electrician, just come out of his time, so he's qualified now. That's why I can call him an electrician. Showed me a little trick. I've got a power lead and also a, a wire tester here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put one of these wires 
in through the earth of this power lead. As long as you use the same on both ends. So I'm just going to put it to the earth because it's easier to find. Here in Australia, there's three. But that's through the earth on this side. And when we go to the other end with our tester, then we'll take the female bit of this power lead, take it across the other side. On this end, like I mentioned, I've got the female portion of that power lead, and that's the earth pointing straight up and down. So I do your tester, one on that, and you put one on the wire. I'm not allowed to stuff this up. My lad said, well, don't mention my name, Dad, if it doesn't work, or you stuff it up, because then it makes me look bad. So there's pressure on me now. He's got a cheat sheet here, which I'm about to go off. He said, turn it on. So he said, put it onto ohms. So it goes off, then it's got a V. I'm assuming that volts, and I'm assuming that's the ohm symbol. So off, pass the volts onto the ohms. Then he said, press the blue button up the top. Then what he mentioned was put one wire on the earth and the other end on one of the wires. And it should complete the circuit. That's obviously doing nothing. I put a circle on that end so I know which one I've done. So that's got a bit of a loop. And that's making noise. Show you again, still on the same earth. Wired wire, not no reading. One with a loop completes the circuit. It doesn't matter which end, whether it's the positive or negative end, because all you're doing is completing a circuit. So I'll try with this positive or this red wand on the earth, and I'll use the other end just to show that it doesn't matter which end. So that's the wire that makes no noise and no reading. And that's the one with a loop in it. And that's lots of reading. So that's telling me that this end now is the same one at the other end which I've stuck the wire up through the female end on the earth. So that's the matching wire for the other end. I'll bring you in and I'll show you what this tester looks like. So now I'm touching the wire which hasn't got the loop in which we know is not the marrying end. We get nothing, just OL. When I go to the one I've put the loop on which I know is the matching end, you can see you get that alarm but also I've got 14.5, which means I've completed the circuit now, and I know that is the definite wire that marries the other end that is in that female section of the power lead. I'm going to do one of two things. Firstly, put a loop, which is already on this end, and the loop down the other end, but I'm also going to use a paint marker and mark a bit of that black plastic with my paint marker. I'll go do the same on the other end. Now that I've got my wires marked, I'm going to start joining the hot wire and the earth wire to the galvanised wire here. What I decided to do is I noticed, even though I've done my best, I glued all my pipes up, made sure they have a good seal, had this taped over, the water still got into here. Because that's 90 degrees, there's a chance of the rain impacting there and running down into there. What I've decided to do is I've cut this putt piece and I'm going to put another elbow so it faces down. I'm not sure whether the joints, it's still seeping through where I joined it or whether it was from here. But I reckon it looks neater and there's less likelihood of chance of getting water ingress through there if I have got this elbow on. But I haven't glued any of these pipes, this putt piece, these elbows all aren't glued. That way, if I need to run new cable down the track, it's just a matter of pulling these elbows off and running the line through, putting a wire line puller through and pulling new wire out. Not that I'm expecting to, but I just didn't want to take the chance in case I had to. So we'll thread those on. I don't want to put them, that's tight enough, that's hand tight. They're not going to come off anywhere. And I reckon that's a lot neater. I've just got to fasten that when I join them all up to where I want it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to wire these on now and then I can pull the excess wire through and make that loop at the other end to hold I it. I think to make it neater, what I want to do is this earth wire, I might drill a hole through this cross brace member 
It's not a supporting member, it's only stopped the legs from kicking out, but they're concreted in, so they aren't going anywhere. Just so I know when I'm whipper snippering under this fence line, I know where my earth wire is. So if I bring it across to here, drill a hole in this pipe and thread it through and put my split bolt there, at least I know it's right up against all these H posts and I do them on all my spring gates moving forward. So I know I can safely whipper snip to there and then stop and then I can either spray or hand pull these weeds from here. So I'll drill this up and the earth are just going to go, I'm going to undo the split bolt. And that'll just go straight in there. Sorry, not the earthy hot wire. That'll go straight up and join into there. Use that one from the earth. Back in position. I can go over there. Beautiful. Bolt that up. And if I do get water ingress through this hole, that's not going to rust out if the water sits in there. That's PVC. It'll just either heat up and dry out or it'll run out this hole anyway. So it's not a concern when it comes to timeless with rust. It's all solid PVC. It ain't rusting out. Beautiful. Fold that loose end around. Now it's got to pull that slack through. Now to secure that, I'm just going to tech screw that bracket, that conduit bracket, onto the timeless H post. Beautiful. That ain't going anywhere. We've just got to do the other side now. So there's that excess wire I pulled out. Just bring that back through. Do the same on this side. There is an extra additional step on this side. I'll explain that in a minute. It's quite an important step actually. Get my two pieces of extra pipe. I'll go there. Okay. You notice this one's a lot higher. The other one I had coming down and it was joined to the second wire here. The reason this is so high is I've got to put a knife gate in. I'll explain more about that in a minute. I'll just catch up to the steps. I'll put the earth through and then I'll install that knife gate. Same place. Take it off hammer drill. Now that I've got my earth secured and neatly stored away, I'll give you a look at the end. It's time to put in my, you see, it's called a swivel cutout switch. Or a, it's got a knife, sort of a metal blade in there, so I just call it a knife gate. What it is, I'm using this as a flood controller. The reason being, I'll show you, once I get it installed and get it finished, I'll go show you why. I've got, I think it's three crossings that I know potentially can have six or eight metres of water, which works out to about 18 foot of water over this electric fence. This is the very reason I need those flood gate controllers. As you can see, my timeless fence runs down here. 
and it goes right down in the bottom of that gully. And if you follow that gully around, all the way down, that tree line there is a creek that comes from the river. And that fills up with water. It's also had water up to the base of that wattle tree right there. So it's well and truly over the fence line. I've got another one, there's two more like that. And if I swing around, I come up the top of here, there's another one. Right here, so it runs down. Same thing, follow that all the way down. And it's that tree line of that creek. And it's a similar height. I've actually had this water come up probably where that shadow, or oh, a bit higher, probably up the top there. So all this is inundated. There'd probably be, have to be at least six, eight foot of water above those timeless H posts there in the bottom of that gully. This I know stays high and dry. And at the other end, where the other floodgate controller is, also stays high and dry. So the idea of this is, if I know I'm getting floods, I can just open this floodgate controller and that metal knife breaks those contact points, which then cuts the flow of energy or power or voltage through this electric fence. So from here on down through the creek's dead, but the rest of my property stays live so I can still keep cell grazing until such time as the floods recede. And then it's just a matter of closing that gate back up and then resuming power or voltage through this fence. So it's just a matter of, oh, that's pretty tight. Hopefully I don't have to use it too often. So I'll fasten that on and then I've got to put me positive to there. And then the other positive from there goes straight onto the fence. And when you pull that gate apart, it breaks the circuit, cutting the power off, which is great for floods. So we'll get that installed. Last thing we've got to do is secure that electrical conduit now to the post. Because it's tall, I'm going to join it in two places. Oh, sorry, should I should have say fasten it in two places. There we have it. Job complete. Jumper wires and floodgate controller installed. I had a change of heart. I had that looped around here and looked pretty busy and messy. So I've decided to cut it off and go directly down into there. The only real reason I had the extra wire was in case I come down here and I whipper snip that earth off. But I had no additional wire on the earth anyway. It's highly unlikely that I'm going to whipper snip up here and damage this hot wire or this positive wire. So I decided to cut it off. I'll give you a look at the other side. As you can see, that's quite neat. There's no really loose wire sticking out that I can collect with the whipper snipper the tractor or the quad or the cows can't get entangled at all this other side hasn't got the floodgate controller is neat as well there we go so that's only got that conduit coming out of the ground and I've got the earth going down there and the hot wire straight onto that one I appreciate you guys hanging around to the very end so that's it. Next time I'm back here, I'll be stalling these spring gates onto this gate section. So have a good morning, have an awesome afternoon and a terrific evening, guys. Where are you watching this from? And we'll catch you later.